Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nettling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to become that confident leader and take your business or your life to the next level. Today, I have John Lawyer as my guest, and let me tell you about John. So he is from Desert Combat Zones to Battle Within. John Lawyer's transformed from a soldier to a spiritual seeker. He acts as one of several guides for Kishar, a nonprofit online spiritual community for people who share their journey and explore their own unique spiritual path. John is an omnist and believes in the vi- the validity, I can say that, of great human thought from around the world and across time. He offers individual spiritual guidance and coaching services as part of the Kishar spiritual community. I'd like to introduce our theme, which is a soldier's journey from war to awakening. Please join me in welcoming John Lawyer. John, so nice to have you on and anxious to hear your story. Thanks for having me on, Vicki. I really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. And I always start out with an easy question. Tell everybody, where do you call home? Where do you live now? I live in North Texas, about an hour outside of Dallas. Ah, okay. Been there. Uh, Excellent. So we gave just a brief insight as to your background. I'd love for you to share the the audience your backstory. Sure. Yeah, I grew up in a small town, central Oklahoma. Pretty typical upbringing, Mm -hmm. uh, two parents, an older sister and all that. And I, I knew as I was getting out of high school, I didn't want to go to college. And so I enlisted in the army right out of high school. Mm. I became a counterintelligence special agent in the U S army. And that was about a year before nine 11. And Mm. so by the time I got stationed at my permanent, you know, base, uh, that was about six months before the war started. And then that was kind of a life changing thing for all of us and around the country. And then all of the people in our unit and I went to war. I spent two and a half years of my five-year enlistment in Kuwait, uh, supporting mm. our troops in Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, Kuwait was used for the invasion point for Iraq and all of that. Uh, so some pretty interesting times, uh, some pretty wild times. And I knew when I was going to uh, wrap up my enlistment that I still wanted to keep doing what I was doing. So I kind of just switched over and did the same thing as a civilian. And mm-hmm. I knew I'd probably stay overseas. So... Uh, my wife and I had gotten married in the military. We had the same job. And so we ended up going to Iraq together as civilians uh, for over a year and a half, over 18 months, and then came home for a while. And then we spent uh, uh, six and a half years consecutively in uh, Kandahar, Afghanistan, Southern Afghanistan. And so I guess out of the first 15 years of my adult life, I spent about 11, 12 years in Kuwait, Iraq. And Afghanistan, uh, you know, mostly at war, 100, 110 hours a week, uh, yeah. seven days a week. Um, I was kind of this driven, you know, deeply dedicated to the mission person that that was that was my whole like existence and identity and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's such a, a huge shift that you had from military to be being so tied to your spiritual being so talk to me about you know just what your spiritual beliefs are so first and foremost i i'm a universalist or an omnist and that basically just means that i i believe that all religions are valid all spiritual philosophies or 
self-help, even if you're just an atheist or a scientist or whatever, we're, we're all saying very similar things and it's all valid. And I feel like we should all be able to practice our own individual spiritual faith or belief right next to each other and talk about it and move, move forward and together, um, doing, doing that, having better conversations. And within that, I have my own kind of personal beliefs that I hold more dear. I'm, I, I, subscribe to kind of the more universalist aspects of Hinduism with the Brahmin and some of the the teachings of of some of the yoga masters and stuff like mm. that. I have a deep appreciation for the Tao and Taoism and um but I, I like to read a, a wide cross section. So whether it's it's philosophy or Christ consciousness or anything in between, I think that it it only adds to our own internal spiritual development. So a lot of people that come back from being in war-torn areas at, in war have, you know, PTSD or, I'm sorry, I, I said that mm -hmm. wrong, but. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, but it, it's, it messes with your brain and, and your, how does your spiritualism, your, your beliefs, your, um, really this wonderful feeling that, you know, we all can believe what we want, but how does that help you stay more centered and focused and, and maybe less stressed? Oh, I think it helps a lot. Those, those seven years between when I came home in 2015 and when I kindly, you know, a couple of years ago when I had my kind of spiritual moment, those seven years where I wasn't on a spiritual path, I was just kind of wandering. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know who I was or, and I was very stressed. I had PTSD, depression, anxiety, OCD, pretty much you name it. I, I experienced it. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I think finally finding my path, uh, recognizing that I was on a journey, it, it, it was grounding. It, mm -hmm. it does help you find a sense of calm and peace. Cause you, I, I feel this connection with the oneness of the universe with other people. I think having that alignment where we kind of have that mind, body, soul all working together, whether you're a driven professional working for a fortune 50 company or you're a stay at home parent, I think we can benefit from living each day in alignment with who we really want to be with who we need to be. And that just makes us happier. It makes us more peaceful, more calm, and we're, we're better for ourselves, but then we're also better for everybody around us as well. I wonder what that conversation was like with your wife saying, uh, hey, honey, I have this, I had this vision, I have this, this um, awakening, and uh, this is my new journey, you know, talk to me about that. Yeah, at that point, we'd been married for 18 years, we've been married 20 years, over 20 years now. And, but she'd always been more spiritual, she had to that point been more spiritual than me, she'd always um, not loud about it, not kind of uh, really overt about it, but she'd always had kind of a spiritual leaning. And so it was kind of a natural, uh, even further marrying of our kind of two parts. And, yeah. um, it worked out. We, we, we co-founded this nonprofit together yeah. with another friend of ours from Afghanistan. And, and so I, I'm kind of involved in it. She's involved. She's, she's got an artistic creative side that, that I don't have that part. And I've, I can kind of speak to people and talk to people and uh, have that that aspect of creativity. So it worked. We kind of work well together, actually. That's good. So talk to us about the Kishar spiritual community. Um, how did it come about? And and really, what is its mission? When I when I kind of had this realization of what my purpose in life was, it was that I wanted to help people help themselves. And I wanted to be able to have conversations with people and vice versa to share mm -hmm. journeys. And so I said, how can I do that? And I felt like there was room in this digital age that we live in for authentic, meaningful connection, you know, like, just like you and I are having a conversation right now. I feel like we can, mm -hmm. can do this online, right? Like, uh, so I wanted to create a place where that could happen, where we could you know, have text chats and type and offer, uh, advice, you know, guided meditation, affirmations, journaling mm -hmm. prompts, stuff where people can build their own spirituality, 
uh, find their own path, but have assistance and uh, help along the way. And they can, t- you know, kind of decide what they want. They don't have to take any dogmatic, no, like in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got to be this way. Just to, you decide what works best for you and what's empowered within you. So I wanted to create something like that, that was warm and and safe. And wasn't this big giant thing like Facebook or Instagram. It's a smaller um, kind of more separate thing that is just uh, uh, more natural. So you are a spiritual seeker, but you're also a spiritual guide and coach. And so who, who would be a typical person that would come to you and, um, and how would you work with them? Sure. I help people that are professionals and then busy and, and try to figure things out better and how to like (laughs) live a more aligned life that the kind of benefits them in their job. I, I help people that are, are more quiet and reserved, but really one thing I really get into with people is figuring out what their higher purpose is, their Dharma, mm-hmm. what they're meant to do uniquely themselves in this world and what they need and want to do and how, how they can find that, understand mm-hmm. it. And then once they have an essence of that and, and know what it is, how do you integrate that to your day to day so that you're, if you're going to work, you're doing it, you're doing what you love. Or if you're going to work and you're not living that purpose in that part of your life, how do you make sure you're integrating it in your other part of your life and your other time that you have so that, that you're as happy as you can be. Mm. And that really impacts the loved ones around you, your, your spouse, your kids and, and, and all of that. Yeah, so true. So <clears throat> you spent time in the desert and I would imagine, um, you had time to think about it while you were there. How did that time in the desert, reflecting back on it as well as living through it, how did that help in that spiritual path that you've taken? I think I learned about how resilient humans are, Mm -hmm. um, that we can deal with a lot, we can take a lot, that we're stronger together. Mm -hmm. Uh, That brotherhood and sisterhood of, our, our brothers and sisters in arms and mm-hmm. uh, that community aspect of it, that that you can have, you can find joy and positivity in things. You can have fun. Even even over there, even in the darkest of times, we would still have, we would try to have fun. We just try to find some joy in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was very informative. Th- that And that there's kindness. Even in the darkest times, there's also kindness. It's that mm-hmm. idea of that light being there, even if you don't think you can see it. Um, I think it taught me a lot about that. You talk about stream of consciousness. Um, for you, what is that? For for me, there's this uh, idea that there's all these things that society has told us we have to do mm-hmm. or should do or can't do, yeah. right? right? All these all these different tribes have told us, you know, from our parents, to our teachers, our coworkers, our friends, and so I think we have to take a step outside of that and figure out what am I with myself? What are my own Mm. values? What are my own beliefs separate from all this stuff I've been told? Uh, Am I, you know, am I being open-minded with myself? Am I being true to myself? It's that, you know, Shakespeare, it's thine own self be true Mm -hmm. uh, idea of, we have to be honest and true with ourselves. We have to figure out who we are separate from everything else with all that background noise kind of muted and then we figure ourselves out. And that that gives us an idea of, of how we can live a, a more fulfilled life, I think. And, you know, for me, that understanding that also helps you to be more self-confident. And, yeah. and when you have that, I think you almost, when you walk into a room, you have an aura about you um, that people that meet you want to get to know you and figure out what is that that you got that I need. <laughs> yeah. I love that because we, we all know there's people that can walk into a room and you feel that energy. You, they mm-hmm. can change the room for better or worse. And so people feel that energy. They feel that when you love yourself completely, people feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if you're lifted up, you're going to lift up those around you. You're going to yeah. um, be kind of a magnet in a good way for people around you. So you talked earlier about having a purpose in Dharma and 
And I think a lot of people during the last three years started to really take some reflection. Uh, they didn't have anything else better to do, I guess, but still, <laughs> God has his ways. Um, so talk to me about living your higher purpose. You know, uh, how important is that really for us in, in, in any stage of our lives? I believe it gets into the essence of what spirituality really is, is what, you know, what do you want, what, what do you want to do where you want to do it enough that you're so excited to go to bed? You can't wait to get up and do it the next day. Mm -hmm. like, um, what light, what lights you up? And, and you probably have an essence of that, but you're, you know, ask other people, what do you see me do? And you see me light up when I do it. Um, and then ask yourself questions and and explore what what that is and then figure that out and then like I said figure out how do I integrate this into my life yeah. uh and if you go back to the oldest teachings uh, the oral traditions that are written down like the 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 Vedic the Vedic literature and the Bhagavad Gita right and mm -hmm. um that's what it's all about it's about living yeah. your purpose and mm -hmm. a lot of ancient religious texts or spiritual texts that's what it goes down to is is living living your purpose yeah, you know, some of the great masters, um, and even current people that are in their later ages, you know, the masters, they still live longer than their normal time. But still, you know, I, I a doctor here in Roswell, she was 104 when she died, and she practiced till she was 100. And, and I just think that so many people their idea of retirement or um, having uh, less uh, less to do, I guess, is a great thing. But when you start to forget about your purpose, if you don't have a purpose, and that purpose may be just to volunteer, to help others, right? Um, you know, not necessarily my idea of retirement, which most people think is crazy, but still, <laughs> but having that as you say that purpose that you need to get up in the morning and there was something for you to do um right. i think that's what keeps you young i think that's the fountain of youth it absolutely is and it, that's a very philosophical spiritual concept that we also know that you can look at studies that show that people who retire and stop doing anything they die sooner and yeah. so science can show us that that when you lose, when you don't have a purpose, that you actually lose uh, brightness and energy uh, mm -hmm. within you. Well, we could probably talk for hours and hours on this. I do have a couple uh, questions for my rapid fire section, so we'll try to keep these answers short. But I, I can understand if you need to elaborate a little bit. So, how do we okay. navigate? our spiritual path in this modern age, fast pace, uh, technology driven, um, everybody having, um, their own agenda. How do we, how do we really navigate that spiritual path? I'd say just be more aware and intentional with your time each day, like how much time you're spending on digital stuff and where you're putting your attention and your, your energy flow. Cause that's, that's going to be where you know, where your energy and attention go is where you put it. So just be aware and intentional about that. And I think you'll, you'll be smoother in life every day. And I think too, um, having that time, whether morning and or evening, um, of reflection, um, you talked about journaling or, um, affirmations and things like that. I think that's important too, to quiet your brain for a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, the second one is, what's the difference between spirituality, art, science, philosophy, religion, and self-help? I see all those things as very much the same thing. I think they're <laughs> less of a Venn diagram and more just like a circle, uh, yeah. you know. So. Yeah, if you think about it, you know, all of them are somewhat tied to deeper thought, reflection, beauty. Yeah. All those great things. Okay. The last one. Um, and I think you kind of already answered this, but what is being open to the universe really all about? You know, the universe will send us what we need always. Mm -hmm. And 
we have to be open to receive it. We have to be prepared yeah. for it. It might not be sending us exactly what we thought in the way that we thought. So be open to it so that you're ready to receive the, the best things that it's sending out to you. So very good. All right. So it's time now for me to share my screen. If you all have enjoyed listening to John and all the things that he shared today and want to contact him, I have his contact information as always if you're just listening, you should have had a paper and pencil from the beginning and taken notes. But if not, go get that right now. And I'm going to share my slide. His website is kishar.org. That's K-I-S-H-A-R.org. Kishar.org. He's all over social media, all over. So you can find him either by going to Kishar Spiritual or by searching his name. Uh, LinkedIn, he's John Lawyer Green Vets, John Lawyer Green Vets, but everywhere else, just use Kishar Spiritual, you will find him. Uh, YouTube, though, he is at Peace on Your Journey, that's at Peace on Your Journey, initial caps for that. I'm going to turn it over now to John to talk to you about things you'll find on that website, uh, any areas in the social media that you should probably take a look at and also what's out there on YouTube at peace on your journey. Go ahead, John. Yeah, we're, we're probably on Instagram, uh, more than most, uh, so they can find us there at Keyshar spiritual. Like you said, our YouTube's pretty cool. We have useful videos on just how to live a more peaceful, calm and fulfilling life. And, uh, we have, uh, videos every, every Sunday on your spiritual journey. And we have every Wednesday on a spiritual philosophy, self-help book. Mm -hmm. And so twice a week, we have videos, check it out and, uh, check out our website. If you want to get in contact. So I see guided meditation, um, all on your website. Is it a regular time of day that you have that or. Uh, we, we post, uh, we post some daily meditations and we also offer some guided meditations as, uh, for members and stuff. Excellent. Well, John, it's been just wonderful chatting with you. Um, I love what you're talking about and, um, and, you know, for people who are still searching, um, uh, why don't you check out, see if, if, if anything to just get some peace and focus in your life and again, help to find your purpose. Absolutely. As, as always, I remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nethling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nethling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.